Hello, we are going on with our lectures on ethnosociology. Today we are going to discuss the third derivative of the ethnic society, the third derivative of ethnos uh, that we identify in the civil society. We could consider civil society as the final process, final stage of uh, destruction of uh, the ethnos as a simple society based on the common identity, collective identity. Uh, it was uh, seriously damaged in the first phase in the people because there is a kind of split of the society on two halves. Uh, the second important shift of the collective identity toward uh, individual identity is made in the frame of the historic nation and the stage of the creation of the national state, statehood, where we are dealing with a new kind of uh, social identity, purely individual one. But there is a kind of um, uh, simulacrum of the collective identity uh, in the form of the national identity. National identity that we have discussed in the last lecture is based on the real individual identity of the citizens, but doubled with a kind of imagined collective identity of uh, uh, the fact to belong to the nation. Nation as artificial bourgeois construction. And when we are coming to the third derivative of ethnic society, we are going to civil society. So there is a very important process, liquidation of the artificial national identity. What is civil society? That is a concept of the social organization based absolutely on one and only form of identity, of individual identity. The civil society is considered to be society of the individuals uh, that normally could not share anything in common. Uh, every individual is the unity, is a kind of unit that is absolutely self-sufficient. It is completely autonomous. Uh, this unit could act basing on its interests or rational decisions and, uh, and uh, is considered to be completely responsible for its own being. So, individual is a kind of closed unit. It could communicate with the other closed units but it is profound, uh, it's, it is absolutely optional. It could interact, it could communicate, uh, it could, it could uh, choose to share something in common or share not. So it is considered, this individual is considered to be absolutely free absolutely liberated uh, of any kind of collective obligations. It could take on itself some obligations uh, as a kind of free will or basing on the free choice, but he isn't obliged to share something with the other. That is the concept of the individual. And this individual identity was implemented in the social 
science and political science already in the frame of the nation, because nation is based on this presumption of uh, individual identity, but it was doubled with uh, imposed national identity as a kind of uh, artificial construction. And when we uh, come, come from the national society to uh, the civic, civil society, so there is liquidation of this artificial national identity. So civil society is based on only on the individual identity without national frame. But it is possible only after the stage of the national society, because we could not come to the civil society starting from ethnos or the people, because we need preparation in uh, the limits and the context of the national society to prepare, to install, to impose individual identity. And after this um, national uh, phase, we could, uh, um, uh, we could uh, create a kind of post-national society, uh, civil society that um, doesn't need any more uh, national frames because it, uh, uh, the conventional wisdom of liberalism affirms that uh, the responsible individual uh, does not need any kind of um, imposed collective society. It could create or construct any kind of uh, social association basing on its own interests as uh, it creates political parties or um, firms, economical um, enterprises and so on. So uh, the individual is not obliged to accept a something inevitable national frame and could act on the international scale on its own account. So, from this idea of the society based on absolutely and only individual identity, we are logically coming to the global society. So, what is global society and uh, what is the difference between global society and the civil society? Uh, to understand that better, uh, we need to follow the process of the form form formation of the individual identity that produces in the frame of the nation. So, civil society begins to be created, to be formed in the frame of the national statehood. So, that uh, so-called Enlightenment uh, program for national statehood, uh, the vision of the progressive or democratic state in the um, opinion of liberals, should uh, educate the citizens of the national statehood as the citizens of the civil society. So, national statehood serves for one purpose, to enlighten the citizen and to prepare them to act on their own account. So, the civil society begins to be formed, to be created inside of the national society, inside of the process of modernization, democratization and liberalization of the national society. That is regarded as a kind of transition from the traditional society of the people to the civil society. So, that is pre uh, a kind of preparation for, uh, for um, the other, the next form, the next stage of the society, uh, precisely civil society. And global society is regarded as finalization of this process, 
when the nations, when the national states uh, fulfill their obligation towards the society and create uh, an accomplished form of individual identity, they could uh, disappear after this function fulfilled and give away and start a global society. So civil society is global in normal sense. It begins, it, it, it comes to, to being in the frame of the nation, of the progressive and modernized democratic nations, but little by little it overgrows the national limits and the state and nation become obsolete. Uh, and after that, that could uh, disappear from the historical scene. So, that is not the conflict between global society and national society, because they uh, are dealing with the same concept of individual identity. But in the case of the national society, national statehood, we are dealing with uh, some um, second uh, identity, national identity, that serves for the purpose of uh, to enlighten uh, the citizens. And in the context, in the case of global society, we are dealing with the accomplished form of the same society based uniquely on these individual identities. So, civil society uh, appears, manifests itself in the national society, but little by little it overgrows its limit and tends to be cosmopolitan, global and world society, one world concept. So, um, uh, the Global society is logical end, a kind of telos, the end, the goal of the uh, civil society. So, creating and developing civil society inside of the national frame, it's the same process to prepare the destruction and liquidation of the nation, the state and its sovereignty, because civil society normally is global society, because any kind of artificial limitation of, uh, with collective identity, including artificial bourgeois and pragmatic rational one of uh, uh, national statehood, nevertheless uh, the state is regarded here as something to be overcome. So it is a transitory organization of the society that should be replaced by one world, by purely global society uh, as a kind of um, perfection of uh, the process of uh, the implementation of the individual identity. So, with the perspective of the global society, we are dealing with the final disappearance of ethnos, because the, the sense of the ethnic community is idea of organic collective identity. That is common for any individual, virtual individual in this society. In the case of the people, Laos, we have collective identity on the bay, uh, in, the, in the case uh, of masses of the society and the beginning of the process of the individuation in the case of political elites, heroic, uh, exclusive individuation. 
In the case of national society, now there is individual identity of the citizen uh, that uh, uh, is regarded as a normative type. But there is the rest, a kind of ghost of collective identity, identity in, um, in the nation, and the idea of national identity. And finally, with the third derivative of the ethnic society, with the civil society, as potentially global society, we are coming, we are arriving at the moment where any trace of the collective identity disappears. So, global society is the society based on absolutely individual identity, where individual is considered to be absolutely liberated, absolutely free from any traces of the collective identity, from the organic, from the uh, traditional society identity, uh, from heroic identity, and also from the national identity. So it is a kind of um, purely individualistic organization of the uh, human society on the world scale. While civil society should be global, why cosmopolitanism is included in this project? Precisely because that nation, the state, sovereignty, represents nevertheless a kind of collect collective identity. And that goes against the concept of the absolute freedom of the individual. So, it, we could not promote nation, national identity or nationalism and not uh, to promote by this uh, same gesture, uh, the, the same step, uh, global society. Creating the nation, we are already destructing, destroying uh, the nation. So, uh, to create the nation is the same, uh, uh, the same step as to destroy, to begin to destroy it in the, the same moment when we uh, are going to create it. Because the process of the transformation on the level of the identity goes in only one sense, in the sense of the absolutization of the individual identity. So, the really civil society the only uh, accomplished version of the civil society should be necessarily global one. So that is we, we could consider us as the end of the process of the development of the um, whole whole cycle of the social transformation, starting from the ethnos ethnic society and uh, arriving to its final point with the global civil society. So we go through all kind of the changes inside of the um, uh, social structures and we uh, arrive at the final point of the process that we could individuate the first stages or stages already in the first si uh, signs of the ethnokinetic processes uh, and uh, after that the split of the ethnos, after that creation of traditional society, uh, the social uh, structures and social stratification, after that na creation of national statehood and national identity, and uh, finally, the, um, the final point, uh, it is um, arrival of the social society, society uh, civil society on the global scale. So, uh, that is a kind of 
ethno-sociological frame to sociological study of different types of the historic society. So ethno-sociology uh, understood in this broad context could serve not only uh, to study the ethnic societies or the Laos, uh, Laos people's society where the considerable presence of the ethnic elements on the basis of it. It could serve also to study post-ethnic society such as national society, civil society or global society because we have in the process of the creation of, uh, of the collective identity some very important uh, processes uh, dealing with the sense of this uh, creation of individual society because individual identity is created instead of collective identity. Individual identity is a kind of destruction of the collective identity of any kind, but also that is very important shift because individual in such situation becomes ethnos by itself. It becomes a, a kind of self sufficient unit that is a kind of ethnos, micro ethnos consisted from one individual. So many special features of the ethnic society go through people's society, through national society towards this final point of individual identity. So there is a kind of destruction of the collective so, uh, so, uh, collective identity in the case of ethnos, so we could consider historical process as ethnocidical, ethnocide, a kind of ethnocide, the, the concrete process of destruction and the killing of any kind of collective identity, and at the same time the shift transferred, transfer from the ethnos of the main features of this uh, society on the individual. So individual becomes ethnos uh, uh, and singular, uh, singular uh, identity um, receives um, the, the features of the uh, previous form of collective uh, form of organization of human life. So, uh, the most important um, result of this analysis is the possibility to use ethno-sociological methods uh, in situation when there is no more ethnos and where is no more including the artificial imagined form of collective identity, as in the case of the nation. So, with the help of the ethno-sociology, we could study these societies that are not ethnic in, uh, in, no, in no, no, no sense, in no way. So, the society where there is not any traces of the uh, of the, any kind of collective identity because historically manifestation of such society, global civil society based on exclusively, exclusively individual identity is a final point of very important process that consisted precisely in the 
um, liquidation of the collective identity. And that is the sense, the semantic aspect, the, 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 the semantic, uh, the, the meaning of uh, the social evolution or involution, because involution, it is the process of uh, coming uh, closer and closer to the central point of some process. And we could uh, call this kind of historical process precisely involution, because the society as something collective is inv involving to the point of the individual identity. So it is a, it, we could consider the history, social history, and the ethno um, sociological sense as a kind of the process of the involution of the ethnos, involution of the ethnic society uh, towards the uh, individual units, uh, accepted or regarded as the main uh, actor of uh, global civil society. So when we regard uh, individual identity, the individual, as a culminating point of this process, not only uh, something that, uh, uh, that is uh, evident, that is empirical, uh, gra uh, empirical fact that we could take and for granted, but we could interpret, interpret the individual with its content with its meaning as a culminating point of the involution of the ethnos. And that is very important from um, the point of the structure of the individual. So individual is nothing simple or atomic in the physical way. Individual is a kind of the last stage of the involution of the collective identity. And being involution of the collective identity, it is from one, on one hand the negation of the collective identity, so it's collective aspect, but at the same time appropriation of the sense of the collective identity in the first and single individuality. So it is a kind of Aufhebung uh, in German, so a kind of uh, overcoming and absorbing uh, at the same time of uh, the content of the ethnos in the individual unit. That in this sense it should be regarded not as evolution in the etymological sense of enlargement of, th of the society or um, uh, development of its inner possibilities, but a kind of concentration of these collective historic possibilities in the figure of the individual as a normative type of the global society. And where we are today from the ethno-sociological point of view. Now, we uh, stay in the intermediate phase between the creation of the civil society inside of the national uh, limits and the, the first stage of globalization as the logical way to finish this process, uh, liquidating little by little national states. So, but liquidation of the national states is not the evil will of some globalist uh, world government, but that is the final step in the process of the involution of the ethnic collective society through, through different phases toward the end that follows logic from the first 
starting point of this historical process. So when we are talking about the end of history, we could use the word, the word, the word, and in two, sen two, two meanings. The end uh, as the finish and the end as the goal. So in some sense, the end of the history is the goal of the history because social history in the ethno-sociological understanding gas precisely from absolutely collective organic identity of the ethnos toward its final stage uh, that is global society based on exclusively on the individual identity so now we are living precisely in this moment of the liquidation of the national sovereign states and we shouldn't deplore it because it is not uh, something that uh, is um, uh, occurring by the chance some kind of anormal anormality or catastrophe national states were organized by bourgeois to abolish them uh, in some time as a kind of pragmatic intermediate instruments to prepare uh, the um, historic manifestation of the bourgeois social identity not only as the ruling type of the society but but as the unique type of uh, the normative social identity. So all the world becomes bourgeois. All the other uh, type of social identification, peasants, um, priests, uh, the warriors, all of them should disappear with the, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, manifestation of the bourgeois as a special social group that is not third state, as we have um, shown in the previous lecture, but it is something completely new for the traditional organization of the society. And this new type of bourgeois um, is, the, is, is considered to be absolute winner of the history when on the global scale bourgeois becomes not only dominant class but the unique type of human and social being that is actually present. So it is a kind of absolute victory of bourgeois spirit uh, and bourgeois type over all other form of social identity. So we should not deplore uh, the, the liquidation of the states because national state, modern national state were conceived to, uh, to fil fulfill some mission to educate and impose and in store uh, the uh, individual identity and disappear just after that. So uh, they could not be something eternal because they were pragmatically created on the uh, Ill, uh, completely um, artificial basis and so they are destined to disappear sooner or later and now it is the time to destroy national states that is the logic of the involution of the social history